Hello, this is Jenny from Healing the Wounded Heart. Today I thought it would be very good for us to look at the subject of disappointment. And I think that as Christians, sometimes we are not even honest enough to acknowledge to ourselves that we feel disappointed, let alone to express that disappointment to God. So, all of us at some point or other in our lives have felt disappointed. And it's difficult to deal with it, isn't it? And so what I thought would be helpful for us today is to take a look at how the psalmist dealt with disappointment from Psalm 42, verses 5 to 6. And this is what he said. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my saviour and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. So immediately we can see here that the psalmist stopped, he paused, he was honest enough to recognise his own feelings of discouragement and disappointment. And so he confessed them to God, but at the same time, he was also putting his hope and his trust again in his God to see him through. So notice that the psalmist wasn't giving in to these feelings of despair, of disappointment. No, rather he was saying, I will put my hope in God again. Yes, I am acknowledging that at the moment I'm feeling really discouraged, but I am going to trust and put my complete hope in my God again. So now let's just acknowledge that the psalmist had every reason to feel so disappointed, just as we too can have every reason to feel disappointed. The psalmist was at a distance from his home and from the house of God. There were taunting unbelievers that kept harassing him. He had memories of far better days in the past. And the present absence of past spiritual thrills and excitement were making him feel even more disappointed. He was facing overwhelming trials. And then there was God's seemingly slow response. So it's as if the psalmist here is saying to himself, look, these reasons are not enough for you to be so discouraged and so disappointed. No, he is saying to his own soul, I will put my hope again in God. I will praise him again. So as we think about disappointment, why are we disappointed? I want to suggest it's because we place too a high expectation. Now, first of all, then, we can place a too high expectation on ourselves, can't we? How many times over the years have we said something or done something and we thought, oh, my word, why have I done that? How silly am I? And so then we beat ourselves up. But at the end of the day, we are human. We will be disappointed with ourselves. What does the word of God tell us? In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 2, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. I can remember just recently, I'd been out shopping. Fortunately, I hadn't brought too much of any value. And there I was sitting on the bus. And as the bus moved away from the bus stop, I suddenly thought, where's my shopping bag? Well, 
by some miracle, I was able to get it back a few days later and it was all intact. Probably because if anyone had looked inside, they'd thought, well, there's nothing there worth taking anyway. But I thought to myself, how silly am I? How could I forget my shopping bag? Next, we can be disappointed with others. Oh my, how many of us have been disappointed with other people? And it's particularly hard when it's perhaps we have been disappointed by close family members that have really hurt us. A very good friend of mine hurt me recently. We've been friends for 31 years and suddenly, completely out of the blue, she accused me of doing something that I'd never done. She was convinced that she'd sent me a text asking for my help and she thought that I just ignored it, that I wasn't prepared to help her. I had never ever received the text. Oh my, and I'm thinking, but I've known her for 31 years. It's difficult, isn't it? People let us down. They do disappoint us because they're human, just as we are. Next, we can be disappointed with God. Or maybe you're one of those Christians that hasn't been disappointed with God. And if you haven't been disappointed with God, I want to suggest that maybe it's because you haven't had high expectations that you perhaps shouldn't have had of God. I have been very disappointed with God. I heard his call to serve him. I went to Bible college. I quite expected at the end of the Bible college time that I would go out and serve God in a great way. But after college, there was nothing. I felt as though he'd abandoned me. I felt as though he turned around and said he didn't want to use me. I developed an eating disorder. I had depression. I was so disappointed with God and I thought, where do I go? I've got nowhere to go because I, there is nowhere to go. Of course, God carried me through that time of disappointment. And so I want to suggest that I was disappointed with God because I had wrong expectations of what I thought God was going to do and how he was going to use me. So, how do we deal with disappointment? Whether we are disappointed with ourselves, with others, or even with God. First of all then, let's acknowledge that disappointment comes through wrong expectation. And it's important that when we feel disappointed that we remind ourselves that we speak to ourselves of God's goodness to us. No matter what we may be facing today, we may be like the psalmist and say, yeah, at the moment I am feeling disappointed and discouraged, but I am speaking to my soul and I am saying, soul, put your hope in God again. And maybe that's exactly what you need to do today. I want to encourage you to do that as the psalmist encourages us. Yes, acknowledge the feelings of discouragement and disappointment. Speak to your soul and remind your soul to put your hope and trust in God again. He who has seen you through past days will see you through today and tomorrow. God bless you. Amen.